Hello and welcome to a very quick little tutorial. This is about making collars. I hope to demonstrate at least some of the very um, basics about making a collar and one particular style which you see here in the picture. Um, I'll be making a few more later on but this is um, just such a nice simple one to use and it's really pretty when you add some embellishments on this or some really nice um, stitching along the edges. I think that these collars work well. Um, I'm also going to demonstrate to you a little bit about this band in the front because we do like it to match up. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up and come here. And what you're going to see first off is this is the piece that I've drawn out to represent half of the shirt. I'm going to, on this piece after making it, I'm going to make sure that I curve in my neckline and my arm opening. The reason that I'm doing these before I unfold this piece of fabric is of course so that I have symmetry here. And that's really pretty important when it comes to making collars by numbers. I have a nice um, uh, numbers that are either the same or even work out really well for making one. So that's what these two pieces are for. Just the initial making it and then curving them. Um, another thing about making it this way, um, the half of it, is that uh, with showing my line lengths, I can see how long the very center of this shirt is. For those of you that don't know how to turn on the line lengths, there's a couple of ways, but the easiest is to just right click in the background and you'll see show line length. Also, it has a shortcut of shift Z as you can see right here. And I'm going to go ahead and get out of there. Now, the reason that I want to know this number precisely, which is 322.54, is because when I do unfold this, you'll see that I no longer have that line length here. And I really would have to guess at what it is precisely. Uh, with um, figuring out what it is first and then unfolding, I have that information. For those of you that have ever made anything like this and you wonder why the heck isn't my pattern all filled in, it's simply because it's been um, uh, basically updated. The pattern's been updated. So you have to re-sync it in order for it to um, be filled in like that. And you can see that over here, um, the whole piece was actually created as well. All right, well, I don't need these two pieces anymore. Um, like I said, I was just using them to demonstrate how to make this pattern. Also, uh, the thing about having the length done here in half, or um, having it done here in symmetry, is the ability to have that dot right there, that point, that sewing point, that allows me to have a very uh, measurable side on both sides of this that are even. So that's good for sewing. So 322.54. Before I delete this piece here, let me go ahead and create a rectangle using those numbers. And it will be again for the band that comes down the front of the shirt. So clicking on the create a rectangle button, right mouse clicking, or left mouse clicking, sorry. And of course, I ended up um, uh, just making a mess here. <laughs> Let me delete that real quick. Um, I actually used my polygon instead of my rectangle. And left mouse click. And for the width of it, I'm only going to put like 10 millimeters. And for the length of it is where I'll put the 322.54 to match this length and click OK. So let me go ahead and get rid of these two pieces now. And let me click the right button here to select it and delete. Select and delete. I'll select this one and just move it over a little bit. Now, what I'm going to need to do before we even get to our collar is I'm going to need to use this as a guide to create internal seams on the front of the shirt. What the internal seams or internal lines do is they give me a place to sew this piece onto. You can't just, you know, click sew and imagine that it's going to go there. You have to tell, 
you know, the shirt where uh, it's going to get sewn to. So we make internal lines. What I want to do, though, before I create those internal lines is actually create a copy of this shirt. And I want to create a copy for two reasons. I'm also creating it at this stage after making the band uh, in, um, on purpose. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to use Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it, and now you'll see that I have this second copy here. Well, I'm going to put this copy down on the bottom. I'm going to take this top copy and just move it over. And then I'll take the second one that I created and move it up. Now, the reason that I did that, and again, this is the second copy made. It was made after this band. That's because as you create pieces, they actually come in layered. So let me move this over here for a moment. And if I zoom in, you can see that this pattern piece is on top of this one. And if I take this pattern piece and move it here, you'll see that this is actually on top of the shirt. Well, I need it, oops, let me grab it again. I need it behind the shirt in order to create internal seams on the shirt piece. If I try to do it with the banding on the top, then I would put the internal seams on this actual piece, and that I don't want to do. So let me just move this so it's about centered right there. And now, clicking on my internal line on Creator, it says Create Internal Polygons or Lines, I can left mouse click where I want the first one to be. And I'm going to scroll in pretty close because I want to get it close to the edge of the shirt. And I'm going to sc um, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the shirt. And let's see, almost there. I'm pretty sure we're almost there. <laughs> oh, only halfway. Let me scroll out a little bit and then scroll back in. Okay, and if I hold my shift key, you'll see that it becomes constrained, and now I have an internal line here. If I scroll back into the center area, because this is selected, I could do Control C, Control V, and then just hold my shift and move this over where I want it. And you can see again, I'm bringing it very close to the edge, yet not all the way over. So let me grab this again and move it a little bit more. And right there is good. Um, I also wanted to create this um, band. Oh, you can see I'm off a little bit. I'll just lift it up. Um, but also I created the second piece so that um, when I copied it over, I wouldn't be copying the internal lines onto the back of the shirt. So let me come in here reselect this and I'm going to come in all the way here and I'm going to move this up until I get it right there and there, that's better. Now what I need to do is one more little trick. I could of course take this band which now appears in my uh, 3D view over here and I can make sure that when I make this, or sew it, or simulate it, I just have this in front of the shirt. And it'll get sewn to the front of it, even if this is behind it. Another thing that happened with shuffling these pieces around, these ones probably are not what you, not in the place that you think they are. So click on this shirt here, and you'll see that it's actually the one on the bottom. And if you click on the back shirt here, you'll see it's actually the one on the top. So I would just move that back, move this forward, and of course you can see the internal lines on there. We just move it out of her breast a little bit, and move this one in a little. So at least my shirt pieces are now in the right place. Um, the only thing that's going to be off is that 
this here piece needs to be flipped around so right click and flip horizontally and let's see what happened with that we can now see that this side of the shirt is actually the one that's closest to this side of the shirt which is here so we know that when we sew the inner sides are going to be sewn together okay so let's go ahead and get ready to make the collar we've taken enough time getting there right but it's really good because um, we have perfect numbers here on the top to work with we have 75.92 four times over and so we're going to create the edge of our rectangle our collar to fit all four of these so when you add this number up the four times it actually turns out to be 303.68 uh, so create a rectangle and left mouse click we want it to be 303.68 wide and we're going to make it 25 tall and click OK. In order to sew the bottom edge of this um, collar to the shirt pieces, we need to cut this into four pieces. So we're going to go to add a new point. And when we see the little purple dot hovering our yellow line, we're going to right mouse click. When you right mouse click, you bring up this split line dialog and we're going to choose uniform split of four. So clicking that to radio mark it and then setting the number to four by using those arrows and clicking OK. And now we can four segments all at the exact same length of the shirt um, sections down here. All right. So that's the first part. We can basically sew this together and it'll be done, except we do want to add a little bit of um, dimension to the collar end here. Now, this collar end here is going to be, this 7592 section is going to be connected to this portion of the front of the shirt. So this is where we're going to make that little flap that overlaps. So click on that curvature button, create curvature, and come in here, and we're going to just pull this out. And that begins to give us a curve, except it doesn't quite give us what we want. Um, I'm going to use the um, edit curve, and I'm going to start pulling this around to actually create the actual shape that I want. So you can hover over it. When it turns yellow, you can pull it. When you hover over it and you get a clear circle, that means you're going to be creating a spot. So there we go. Now these lines do not matter when it comes to, uh, or these dots do not matter when it comes to sewing. Um, they are just here as uh, shape keepers for our curve. So we're not going to worry about that. But what we are going to look at is the shape of the actual pattern color here. Now this does not get fixed when you turn on the, the sync button. As you can see, it's still on right now um, because this isn't an, um, this isn't a result of the piece not being in sync with the um, model in the uh, 3D view. This is actually the way that the mesh is shaped. So the reason it is shaped like this is because there's very little geometry that makes up this mesh collar. So we want to tell this mesh collar to actually have more geometry so that it fits into the curve better. Now, if you were to turn on the mesh look of this and scroll in here, you can see that there's not a whole lot of geometry that makes this up. And we don't really need there to be, especially with the straight ends and the long side here. But when it comes to this edge, you see there just isn't enough edges and vertices to create this round shape. Well, if we use our edit our pattern button here and click on this, and then go into the properties editor, there is this thing called um, particle distance. And Particle distance means that each one of these triangles are at least 20 millimeters away from each other. So if we lower this, then the distance between the um, vertices becomes uh, smaller. 
So if we change this, let's say, to 10 point, then you can see how this um, gets more geometry and it's able to form that circle better. And 10 is pretty good. Um, the more that you lower this, uh, the longer the simulations can take, and of course the more geometry you're going to get. Because we can do this per piece, and because this is such a small piece, we can actually take this down to maybe 5 or 2, 7. I'll start with 7. And actually that looks really good, so I'm going to leave it right as it is. And I'll close this, and I'll turn this back so that I can see the solid. Now, one other thing to do is when we simulate this collar, what's going to happen is that from this point here all the way to the back, it's going to be attached to the shirt. But this end nor this end will be attached to anything, and that can make your collar flop around. So let's go ahead and in the curved area here, let's create an internal line. And I'm going to click right up here by this first um, dot, and then double click at the second one uh, underneath. I'll use my um, Create a Curvature button to begin creating this. I'll use my Edit Curvature to edit it to be the shape that I want it to be. And as you can tell, I am creating a shape that is very close and matching the actual curve that I have for the end of my shirt. And I'll just increase this size a little bit to bring it very close. Of course, you know, you can have this um, as close as you want. And I am going to move this end just a little bit off the actual. And let me, let me get rid of that one there. Actually, no. Let's see. Let me bring this back where it was. I ended up making an extra one because I wasn't, um, I wasn't paying attention really closely to what I was doing. And so, I want to select just that one. And I have them directly on top of each other, so it's a little hard to see. Alright, we'll leave it there for now, instead of me fussing with it and taking up all your time. Um, after I get that created, I'm going to um, use my edit pattern and double click on it to select all of it. Control copy with uh, Control C, Control V to paste it. And using my shift key when I get down here I'm going to constrain it and paste it here near the end of the there we go uh, and now I'm going to be able to sew this front internal seam to this back internal seam and that will keep it closed up nice and neat for me so let's start sewing Using the uh, segment sewing, I will sew the outsides of the shirt because I know those go together, and the insides. I'll sew the outside shoulders together and the inside shoulders. I am going to come in here and actually move this pattern piece a little so that I can sew the outside of my band to and let's see here. Let me move this a little bit because I am getting it. There we go. So I will sew this internal to this edge and this edge to this internal. And then I'm ready to do the collar pieces. So this one again here gets sewn to this front. So clicking here and here. That means that this one is going to start going around the back of the shirt, so those will get connected. And then that just leaves us with the other side. 
And finally, we need to do the um, collar internal seams. So, sewing this one. And I guess I clicked on it twice. So there's once. And then that one. And let's see what we've got here. Now, the only thing that I like to do to prepare this is I'm going to take this pattern piece and I am going to rotate it. So, uh, to getting my environment button and going to the gizmo, I'm going to make sure that I'm on world coordinate gizmo. And I'm just going to take this and turn it backwards. Because remember, this side is going to fold around the front of the neck and connect along this edge. And so let me just take this piece here and let's move it behind. I have not um, been playing in Marvel's Designer today and I keep using the keyboard <laughs> shortcuts for my uh, screen camming and panning based on another uh, program at the moment. So please forgive me if I'm kind of have the screen going a few odd directions and I am bringing this rather close to the body it may tuck into the avatar but um, we could easily pull it out but the closer that this is to uh, where we want it in the final result will help this collar bend easier for us so with that done those pieces in place let me go ahead and click on simulate and not so bad. Let me just go ahead and pull this out of the breast area. Like I said before, it's really easy to do that. Nice and quick. It didn't take any time. Uh, what has happened here, though, is it looks like my collar flap has gone behind this one. And that's okay, because what we can do is we can pull that out. And let's see. Huh? It's going to give me a hard time. All right, let me turn um, simulate off. And I'm going to. Well, actually, I don't know if that's going to help with this actual one. It is really stuck in there today, so let's see. You just have to sometimes work it out. There we almost had it. <laughs> it's good, not going to come out for me because, of course, you know, doing a tutorial is going to keep it in there. All right, so let's see. Let me go ahead and turn the simulation off. I'm going to uh, just reset my pattern pieces a little bit. And as I simulate it, I am going to actually uh, slow it down before it gets where it's all the way in. So I'll click on it and you can see I've stopped it just before that piece tucked in there. And let's see. I do not know why it's giving me such a hard time this time around when it hasn't before. We want to just pull on that so that it pops right out from in there. There we go. It actually did it for me that time. And not so bad. So you can see, just pulling these pieces apart, I got it to pop in there. As you can see, not everything is like um, perfect the first time around. You gotta practice a little bit. And then of course, let me just pull her uh, shirt here so that her breasts are not tucked in like that. And anyways, there is the start of your shirt, and you have a nice collar, and you have a band that's lined up perfectly. You, of course, can make this band wider to accommodate buttons or stitching or any kind of embellishments. And you have um, done the basics on making a, a collar, at least the basic idea of starting one. So good luck and have fun with them.